it's almost romantic in a sense. You get a book like this one, Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces by Paul Halmos. You sit down with a piece of paper, a pencil, and you try to read it. You try to understand it. You'll probably struggle. You're probably going to feel confused. But you can smell the book. It smells good. Wow, it smells really good. And you realize it was written by a legendary mathematician. You know, Paul Hamels wrote a bunch of books. What I really love about Paul, and I'll use his first name just to make it seem more real, is that he had the best quotes. He has really, really cool quotes. One of them says that when he was trying to learn a new subject, he would just gather as many problems as he could, and as many examples as he could, and just go through all of them. And it's a simple statement. It's an obvious statement. Obviously, you know, that's what we're going to do when we're trying to learn. It's what we all do, but is it? And when it comes from someone as successful as Paul, who did so much mathematics, who wrote so many books, I feel like it means more because it shows that he had to work incredibly hard to get to the level that he achieved. This is a book, by the way, on linear algebra. I've had this book for several years and actually bought this book because one of the subscribers here on the channel, who I haven't seen in a long time, he recommended the book. He said, oh, you should get this book. And I'm like, this guy's cool. I'm gonna do what he says. So I went on the internet and I bought the book. And he was right, it was a really cool book. He was, a, he was an older gentleman, I believe. And so he knew a lot of the older books, the classics. You know, he was always talking about the classics. So uh, he really helped me expand my collection uh, several years ago. So thanks for that. But this book is pretty good. There's probably better books today. There are better books today that you can get to learn from uh, that are easier to read than this one. But as a collector of math books, I, I think it's a must have. This one is the second edition. I could not afford the first edition for whatever reason. It was just a little bit too much money, but it's kind of cool. The old copies, this one has a nameplate. It was owned by Charles Brass. I don't know who that is. That's the previous owner, Charles Brass. Who's that? Just some random person maybe, maybe someone famous. I don't know. It's a lot of history in it, but doing math alone has that effect. You can, you can sit down and you can make it personal. Not, I'm not saying you should always do math alone. There's, there's certainly a benefit, you know, of working with others, you know, working with groups is super important. I remember the few times, and I can probably count them on my hand, where I worked with other people. I was a loner. I sat in the back of class. I was scared to raise my hand. I was that guy who, you know, the stereotypical, shy, antisocial math nerd. That's what, that's what I used to be. And it wasn't until I started teaching that I changed. Just, just like that, instantly, just instantly, like from one second to the next. Well, not quite. It, it, took, it took a couple semesters of teaching. The more I taught, the more I changed. But that first change, that first shift was pretty dramatic. So yeah, I think it's better to study alone in some sense. But there is a benefit you know, to studying with others. And I think that when you have the opportunity to work with other, with other people, you should take it always. Because those opportunities, while they might not seem like something you want to do, and it might not seem like you know, beneficial to you, maybe you already know everything, it's still gonna be good. For, for example, I remember when I was in Calculus 2, I got invited to a study group for infinite series, for the infinite series test. And I loved infinite series. So I went and I showed up to the study group and I was surprised that nobody knew any of the tests. Basically ended up being me teaching everyone else, you know, how to determine whether a series converges or diverges, how to find, um, you know, the, the Taylor expansion, etc. you know, how to do all that stuff. I was showing people how to do it. And I was like, wow, it kind of made me feel really good. It made me feel smarter. So 
it was a good confidence booster. And I remember that experience and I, it was a good one. So while I do think it's better to study alone because you can have those moments with your old books, you can have that quiet, you can sit there with your pencil, just the sound of a pencil. It's good to study with others too because you can learn from other people as well. Some people talk about studying with music. You know, do you listen to music when you study? What do you think about that? There was this famous mathematician. His name was Paul Erdos. Paul Erdos was really famous. So Paul Erdos was so famous that if you publish a paper with Paul Erdos, uh, I believe you have an Erdos number of one. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. So if you publish a paper with Paul Erdos, you have an Erdos number of one. But Paul Erdos died, so I don't think it's possible to have an Erdos number of one. Pretty sure it's not possible. And then you can have an Erdos number of two if you, know, if you published a paper with someone who published a paper with Paul Erdos, etc. It's kind of like the, the Kevin Bacon number. There's something similar with Kevin Bacon. He's an actor. I have a friend who has an Erdos number. I should, I should ask him uh, what his Erdos number is. But Paul Erdos used to say that uh, music was the devil. That's what he used to say. Paul Erdos was really strange. Um, Crazy, maybe is the word. He was a mad scientist of a mathematician. Paul Erdos would go door to door and knock on people's doors, on, on fellow mathematicians' doors, and say, my mind is open. And he would just travel. He was like a traveling mathematician. Um, very, very prolific. Very smart man. I was actually reading one of his proofs uh, the other day uh, in a discrete math book by Balakrishnan. Anyways, Paul Erdos was against music. He didn't believe in music according to Wikipedia. And he also took a lot of things that uh, aren't very safe to take. But he believed in studying with others. He did not believe in studying alone. He was a very social guy and he probably did a lot of alone studying as well. So I think it's good to do a combination of both. But I mainly wanted to make this video for those of you that can't study alone. I know there's a lot of people that can't bring themselves to open a book and sit down and do it. And I think it comes down to just getting started. I think the best advice I have for you, if you're having trouble doing math alone, if you're having trouble getting started, if you're having trouble with motivation, is to tell yourself that you're gonna sit down and just read one page. That you're gonna sit down and do just one math problem. And once you get started, a lot of times you can just, you can just keep going. You can just keep going. So if you do at least one problem, if you can get yourself to do one, then many times more will follow. A lot of times you won't be able to do more than one. You'll do one problem and, and that's pretty much it. But many times when you get started, you can do more than one. So yeah, do math alone. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. The Jordan form. Yeah, that's a topic that is... Um, Hard to learn. Books don't usually have a lot of examples on Jordan form. If you want to learn mathematics, check out my courses, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on Udemy, but if you go through my website, it's cheaper that way. So if you want to learn math, I've got a bunch of math courses there. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting subscribe today. And most importantly, keep doing math. Good luck.